Okay. Um, we're continuing uh, the interview with Shea Marsh in Little Hawk of the Gossamer Court. And uh, we're going to talk about his fire art. But to give you a little background, um, people know that you know I used to have worked with fire artists for a long time. And Shea and I have been friends for three and a half years now. And for two years, I had no idea that he was a fire artist until our friend Nelly came up and said to me, have you ever seen Shea Firespin? And I said, Shea Firespin? And the first time I saw him, and you know how hard it is to strike me silent, I sat there after watching him for like 15 minutes dead quiet. Um, and then I asked Shay one day, I said, do you know what I do? And he said, no. And we had been friends at that point for two years, knowing a little about one another. Isn't that right? Yeah. But probably for a best, so. Yeah. Um, who was your teacher? With what? Fire art. Me? Yeah. Nobody... To help me with it, really. Like, uh, I'd watch people every once in a while that were at these festivals, but that was only two, maybe three times a year they'd actually fire spin. So that was a total of six times before East really knew that I spun it all. So. You know, to your credit, you recognized, and you told me this a year ago. You said to me, I want to do this, I want to make it work. But you also added that I don't have the discipline to do it. And also you didn't have teachers that could help to bring you up um, a few more notches. Uh, to your credit, already, as a self-taught fire artist, it's pretty amazing. Um, what are some of the instruments that you use in fire art? explain them to people well I want to do a lot more than I already have a uh, sword double sword there's bow staff uh, working on double bow staff which is kind of freaky but um, there's nunchucks rope dart which is pretty much a nine foot rope with wood a weight at the end. Um, getting a little bit into whip, fire whips, uh, a little bit into poi, which your double ball and chain pretty much. Uh, well, this goes on. Um, if it's fire, I want to pick it up and try to do something with it. What happens to you? when you start spinning? Where do you go? I just throw a trance into the sound of the fire. But like, your, your movements reflect that. I mean, where did you pick that up? Nobody. Me. Like, that's just trying to flow with it. Where do you want to go with the fire art? America's Got Talent, Circus Soleil, everywhere, anywhere, it don't matter as far as it can take me. You have a real passion for this. I can see myself doing it for a long time. You know, your, your grandmother said to me, you know, she was observing the different accomplishments that you had, and that was the one thing she said, you know, when she saw you doing that she really understood this was something that you really wanted to do. But you were short on discipline and training in other aspects um, of the art. And you asked me last October what? What? With regard to discipline. Trying to help me out trying to help me get more into everything that has to do with it. You you I also think. told me that 
I needed to take a firmer hand with you on that, and I told you some of your friends were going to hate me. Was I right? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid shit happens all the time. It's... <laughs> well, yeah. But the thing is, you recognize that. And, shit happens. And what's my bumper sticker? More Life shit. sucks. More shit <laughs> happens. No, I'm not there. But, um... You know, as you progress in this, you know, and we've talked about this, on the Pagan and Hippie Festival circuit, you're not going to make any money. Um, your desire is to go mainstream and to reflect that. We've talked about I would that. love to be able to have, you know, West Virginia know what the hell this is. I mean, a lot of people don't understand what I'm even talking about when I get into stuff like this. I guess the best way to do it is just show them. Well, it's, um, okay, you, you do realize it's a novelty act. And even though it's awesome... It's like, not novelty to me? No. <laughs> it is not novelty to me. But you realize that, I mean, we've got some great <coughs> footage of you spinning with no drums whatsoever. The only thing in the background is the percussion of the bugs making out at night. You know? Um, but Coolest scene ever, man. Yeah. We, we, we've we talked about this and, and using different artists and musicians in the process, co-creating. What would you say to them? Why should they help you? Drawing the dark side, we have cookies. <laughs> no, man, it's really fun. It's really helpful with balance and I mean it's really hard to explain but you just get in that zone where nothing else is around you and everything that is around you you're super aware of and it's just an incredibly intense feeling that interconnection you could say it as such well I just did <laughs> Apparently. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, all of us artists, uh, we artists are actually very vampiristic. We feed off one another. And, uh, you know, I, I think what you're speaking of at this point is that interaction that you have with other artists. Um, how hard is it for somebody to get you to work with them on a project? All you need to do is ask. I, I'll do the best I can help you with. I may not know everything about the subject, but as far as I do know, I'll help you out with whatever I can. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time online going through and looking at different fire instruments, etc. Um, is there anything out there that you want to do that it would be complimentary to fire art, I mean, contact juggling, acrobatics. Acrobatics, I would love to get into. I would love to be able to do fire art while doing gymnastics. I mean, that's part of the reason I want to get into martial arts. It promotes your body being able to do shit like that in the first place. Uh, I don't care if you do a like double backflip 360 flip with fire that's gonna look awesome no matter how you land <laughs> well you know I've only seen two fire artists you and Graham Rexroad who have grace in what you do I mean this this beautiful sensitivity and what do you say to kids that want to take up fire art, but they're afraid their friends are going to think it's sissy if they start to move with grace and balance? And it's not just, you know, all out there, Thor, fire, boom. <laughs> That's how you get yourself hurt. <laughs> uh, like... 
I don't know, once you get into it for a while, you'll start to understand that it's not all about the speed, it's not all about how high you can throw it, it's about the control over it. Well, you're crazy enough to have been balancing swords off your head of late. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really wanting to do this, like, three style, or three sword dance style or whatever, where... I'm doing Florentine sword movements in slow motion while balancing another katana on my head. I think that would be really awesome. Well, and that would also promote uh, self control and balance and overall just control over the body. And I am. Um... I had the occasion to watch you doing backflip O's around a fire, butt naked. Do you consider yourself to be a circus performer? <laughs> really? <laughs> uh... I guess performer can be fun. But you you take it to a level of artistry that a lot of people don't. I mean, you are an intuitive and instinctual artist when it comes to movement, um, when it comes to your fire art. Um, you know, it's like, you know, you and I have talked about this. Uh, what advice can you give to people about taking care of their bodies that want to do this and stressing the importance of that I mean it don't matter what kind of sport you do it don't matter what kind of hobby you have you're going to fall every once in a while and I mean if you fall on a skateboard you might sprain your ankle or break a leg or break an arm if you walk into fire spinning, if you're not respectful, you can get third degree burns on one spot of your body or, I mean, everywhere. I mean, it's just treat everything you do with respect and know the dangers involved and don't take them for granted just because you think you're good or that you know you have something down because you always will slip. And one time or another and when you do it's just about picking yourself up and taking care of yourself while you're healing and not doing something stupid in the middle of it like try and go back out and skateboard when you have a twisted ankle it ain't gonna work I mean if you get hurt allow your time to heal and you'll be back out there before you know it. Hopefully with better courage next time. Um, mother, myself, um, and others have acted as your safety before. Um, please explain to people why a fire artist should never burn alone. And uh, what a Too safety dangerous. is. Uh, Safeties are the people with the towels. Uh, they're the ones with the fire extinguishers. They're the ones that tell you if you are on fire. There is no way to do that. and You catch yourself on fire and don't know it. That's when shit turns serious. And that's where you do get major burns all over your body if you're not careful. Uh... Safety is what it's called, a safety. How do I feel about fire artists that will walk around with five or six burns on their body year after year at festivals? You need to get better, better at that shit before you light it on fire. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, you know, as I know, I'm spending... And don't try and make out with fire either. That's not very... very Interesting. <laughs> Jax. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have 
really worked at, at instilling a few things into you uh, with regard to your fire art. Um, you know, and, and we have a united dream on getting you out there to be seen by other people. How do you think mainstream uh, communities are going to deal with fire art? Well, I've seen a little bit of West Virginia's response, and they're more confused than anything, I guess. But they're in, entertained by it. Like, wow, it's fire. Somebody's warping fire and fucking with it. Oh, my God. Is this dude insane? Do we need a mental institution? No. <laughs> Well, I've always but, said if they all if they locked us all up, we'd at least been in the same asylum. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'd feel sorry for those people. <laughs> um, is this something that you want to teach others? I always have. I'm interested in making equipment. I'm interested in anything that has to do with it. This shit is cool, man. You need to check it out. <laughs> you know, I obviously agree. Um, you know, we talked about the Rhode Island Fire, and I told you how I used to be able to get indoor bookings um, for artists until that happened. And as we discussed, it was a bunch of drunk hippies that set the place on fire. This wasn't about fire art. It was about fire disaster. Hey, dumbasses. Don't fire spin indoors, please. Bad idea. Do First you, off. <laughs> do you think that fire artists should form a union of a sort that will teach safety? Yeah. Not just safety, but I mean the full spectrum. Like, uh, I haven't been to a place, but I have wanted to visit it. In Cincinnati, it's called, I think, the Poi Pound. And I guess it's just a bunch of poi spinners and fire spinners that meet up on Tuesdays or something like that. But it's a Cincinnati group. Like, a bunch of people just show up to spin and network different moves, I guess you would call it. But, yeah, I would love to get that started here in West Virginia and uh, that's one guy I've met a few times he's actually started something up in Charleston West Virginia called uh, Flow Art Society and they've mainly been doing uh, glow sticks and stuff like that and I brought in fire staff and I'll tell you what, not many people from Charleston know what the hell fire spinning is. I've had more people just stare down at us like, what the hell are they doing? But, uh, no cops have been called yet. Good. I'd be rather pissed. But, um, I always go about things safely and to the best of my ability. I won't do anything that I know I can't do. Well, on a, on a small level with all the other work that I'm doing with you, I wanted to ask you, and this is really the first time I've asked you, <coughs> would you like to help me lay the foundation for a firework this year? Yeah, that sounds interesting. That sounds very fun. Well, you know... That sounds it, feasible. It's in order to get... And you know I go out to fire departments. And I talk to them, and I ask them, "Can my friend Shay Marsh spin fire like in Vero Beach?" And they're like, "What the hell is that?" Or hell will freeze over, and the devil will have icicles hanging off his testicles. And then they're like, "What's that?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shay, I, I I appreciate your 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 talking about fire art. Um, I love it. As 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 these interviews continue, we're going to touch on a number of subjects. Um, you know, and this is not something limited to you that I want to do. I mean, you've introduced me to a lot of amazing artists. And one of the reasons you hold the crown is because you do basically the same thing that I do on a smaller level. 
Um, I'm just okay. more local with it. Right. But, um, you know, you, I, I've watched you with younger skaters. I've watched you with younger fire artists. And um, you definitely have a teacher's energy about you. And a very thoughtful one. Um, what would you advise people out there that have the same gift that you do? with regard to kids and teaching that? Well, I probably don't even need to say because y'all already know. I mean, do right by them and always help them out because they're most likely going to need to help you out of those particular subjects you're going to need or teach them to do, so... And teaching also teaches yourself in many ways. It re-teaches you the basics, if nothing else. I just want to thank you very much. Anytime. Have a good night, y'all.